This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Internal Israeli government documents have revealed the Israeli Ministry of Intelligence is recommending the forcible transfer of the entire population of Gaza to the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. The 10-page document, which is dated October 13th, has been published in full by the Israeli news outlets Local Call and Plus 972. The document recommends transferring all Palestinians to Egypt and setting up a, quote, sterile zone of several kilometers near the border between Egypt and Gaza. In addition, the document recommends Israel then prevent the, quote, return of the population to activities residences near the border with Israel, unquote. Fears of a new Nakba, or catastrophe, have been growing ever since Israel ordered all Palestinians living in Gaza City and in North Gaza to vacate their homes and head south. On Monday, Palestinian U.N. Ambassador Riyad Mansour accused Israel of trying to depopulate Gaza. They want do to depopulate the Gaza Strip completely from the entire population and throw them in the lap of Egypt in the Sinai Desert. No one should justify our killing or find reasons to give more time to the killer. Call for an end of this assault on an entire nation. Stop the killings in the West Bank by settlers and occupation forces and the forced displacement underway there. We go now to Haifa in Israel, where we're joined by the Israeli historian Ilan Pape. He's professor of history and the director of the European Center for Palestine Studies at the University of Exeter. He's the author of several books, including The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine and A History of Modern Palestine, One Land, Two Peoples, as well as The Idea of Israel, A History of Power and Knowledge. Fifty years ago, Ilan Pape fought in the Israeli military during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, has since become a leading critic of Israel's occupation. Professor Pape, welcome back to Democracy Now! If you can start off by uh, talking about your take on what's happening today. You just heard the doctor in Gaza, who just left al-Shifa a few minutes ago. Yes, I think, uh, Amy, it's good to be back uh, on your program. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think what we're seeing now, what unfolds in front of our eyes, uh, is a genocidal situation uh, by which people are targeted, uh, whether they are children, babies, uh, in hospital or in schools. And uh, this is a massive operation of killing, of ethnic cleansing, uh, of depopulation. The pretext for that kind of savagery is revenge for what the Hamas did on the 7th of October. But I think the real intention here is not just revenge, but trying to exploit what happened on the 7th of October to create new realities uh, and historical uh, Palestine. You called it uh, uh, a new Nakba. I think that this is the Nakba has never really ended for the Palestinians, so it's a new horrific chapter in the ongoing Nakba uh, that the Palestinians are suffering uh, uh, here. So this is a really a, a horrific situation that can only be stopped from the outside, because there is no motivation inside Israel uh, to stop the operations, nor to care more about the lives of innocent people despite what the Israeli army claims to, to do uh, in the field itself. I want to play a short clip of Prime Minister Netanyahu speaking um, over the weekend. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. And we do remember, and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the 70 
1953 October war and all other wars in this country are hero troops. They have one supreme main goal to completely defeat the murderous enemy and to guarantee our existence in this country. We've always said never again, never again is now. And I want to play Netanyahu from last night. Calls for a ceasefire are calls for Israel to surrender to Hamas, to surrender to terrorism, to surrender to barbarism. That will not happen. Can you respond to the Israeli prime minister, Professor Pape? Yes. I think the main uh, attempt here is to make sure that people do not understand the context in which the Hamas operation uh, occurred. To totally dishistoricize uh, that event, to forget about the uh, 15 years of the inhuman siege on Gaza, or 56 years of the ruthless occupation and ethnic cleansing in the West Bank, and 75 years of not allowing refugees to come back uh, to their homes. I think this is an attempt to Nazify the Palestinians, which is not new, by the way. The Israelis, every now and then, use it. If you remember, Menachem Begin uh, uh, compared uh, Yasser Arafat in the bunker in 1982 to Hitler in the bunker. Uh, the, the Nazification of the Palestinians is meant to, first of all, license Israeli policies without any consideration to international law uh, or, or human rights, and secondly, to divert us from talking about the real issue here, which is not uh, the Hamas or uh, its uh, actions on the 7th of October, but rather the situation that uh, bred this kind of violence. Uh, rather than talking about the symptom of violence, we should talk about the source of violence. And the source of violence has not changed. We have millions of Palestinians for years being oppressed, ruled and controlled by, by Israel, and they are fighting with the means that they have, uh, and this is going to go on uh, unless, of course, there is a willingness to go back to the uh, negotiation table and ask why the uh, violence erupted in the first place and what are the best ways to prevent another cycle of violence uh, in the future. There's a second reason for Netanyahu's uh, uh, rhetoric. Of course, he, he doesn't want the Israeli media or the international community uh, uh, to deal with his own uh, problems that were very acute before the 7th of October, and uh, to say this is now a situation where you cannot at all, but this is a domestic issue, you cannot uh, talk about me or my failures. This is a moment of existential uh, 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 threat to, to Israel, and therefore uh, uh, this kind of rhetoric will continue. Uh, and, and it's very dangerous, not to mention the fact that it abuses, when they use the Holocaust, it abuses the Holocaust memory, uh, because with all the horror of what happened on the 7th of October, uh, this is not the Holocaust, and there's no comparison between Palestinians who act after years of oppression and siege to Nazis who just target Jews because of their Jews. There's no comparison. This whole language is not the one to be used. And uh, uh, I think that uh, Netanyahu uh, is trying to galvanize uh, a, a very vindicative Israel behind him. And the results of this kind of policy are unfolding in front of our eyes. And we just had this horrific and very moving uh, 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 kind of report that you had with, uh, with the doctor from Gaza b before me. Professor Pape, can you talk about the hostage families? Um, uh, they don't get a lot of attention what they're calling for, though they get tremendous attention for who these hostages are and the people who were killed on October 7th. Uh, but there are many. Um, for example, we interviewed uh, Noy Katzman, the brother of Chaim, who uh, was killed by Hamas on October 7th. He said his brother was a peace activist, and he himself uh, said, not in my brother's name. Um, he called for a ceasefire. Um, and I wanted to ask you about this force of the hostage families and about the everybody for everybody proposal. Uh, on Friday, just after we got off the broadcast, um, it said, you know, imminent 
major release. And some thought that Netanyahu was pushing forward with the invasion more quickly, because he didn't want uh, this possibility to happen. But explain the proposal of all, ref all hostages, um, over 200 of them, in return for all Palestinian prisoners, and who these prisoners are, close to 7,000 of them. Yes, I, I think that uh, not everybody uh, among the families, because I don't think they're all made of the same cloth, uh, but many of them uh, understand that the only way to bring their uh, dear ones back home is this kind of an exchange of uh, prisoners. Uh, we are talking about uh, thousands of Palestinians who are incarcerated in Israeli jails, many of them without trials. Uh, and they are, their kind of the allegations against them vary from actual participation in uh, guerrilla or uh, uh, violent actions against Israeli citizens or soldiers, and, and those who are uh, uh, incarcerated for being a member of a Palestinian organization. Uh, they are, some of them are very young. Some of them are women, some of them are very old and have been there for a very long time, and some of them were just recently incarcerated uh, without trial uh, in, uh, in, in the West Bank. Um, they are all part of the Palestinian liberation movement, uh, and it needs uh, a, a very different Israeli perception of the Palestinian struggle and those who participated in its, its struggle to be able to say Indeed, this is the only way forward, namely to release all of them to the last one and receive all of the people who were taken by the Hamas in, on the 7th of October. What I can tell you, Amy, which is very interesting, that former uh, generals in the Israeli army, former heads of the Israeli Mossad and uh, Shabak, the Secret Service, are supporting this kind of exchange. Uh, and, and this is a, a very important position that they are holding, and that may explain the fear on Netanyahu's uh, uh, side to let this issue extend longer, because the voices that are calling for such an exchange are not coming from the extreme Israeli left or the liberal Zionists. They're coming from some very powerful people who were heading some of Israel's most important institutions, such as the, the Mossad, the army, and the Secret Service. Um, will it take place? I don't know. It depends very much on how things unfold on the ground itself with the invasion that nobody in Israel gives the Israeli public any details of how it goes on. But it seems that it doesn't go as well as the Israelis claim it does. And uh, depends a lot, of course, of the international community, because quite a few of the people who are held by the Hamas have also dual citizenship. Uh, but there's no doubt, Amy, this is the only way to release the, the people who were taken on Saturday. Uh, neither Israeli commando salvage operation nor piecemeal deal will bring all the people back. This is a, 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 a situation where you can solve the problem and not delay it for another five or six years with babies and old people who might not survive a long stay in captivity. Professor Pat